Welcome to SketchUp Stage Design Part 2. Today we're going to be building a stage from scratch. So you see we got an empty bay here. We've got the prop file here. And I've got an idea in my head on what we're going to do. It's going to be a short course. Uh, Timing is going to be a factor and it will be pretty interesting. So the first thing I need is a plate rack. So there's a plate rack over here copy paste going to rotate that around to zero degrees because I want it parallel with the back berm put it in the middle here and I'm going to put two mini poppers underneath it so the mini poppers are over here copy paste one it doesn't look like it's quite square Maybe it is. Alright, so we'll copy that. Put number two. Can move this one over a little bit. That's pretty close. We'll see. We may have to tweak them a little bit later. Well, that didn't work. That's. One of the problems with the snap command is sometimes, or the uh, where it snaps to an axis, sometimes it can't quite move it where you want. You've got to zoom in so you get that fine adjustment. All right, so we've got these there. Uh, this one here is going to be an activator for a max trap. So we're going to go back. Here's the max trap I want to use. We're going to put it over here. Rotate it around a little bit. Remember what I said in the other video, the further you get away from the object with your cursor, the more refined or the yeah, the, the more fine adjustment you have. So we're gonna put that there. Alright, so this particular one whoop, ran into the wall. It looks like that would be a disappearing target. Now obviously you need you can have to write up in your uh, written stage briefing what you want it to be disappearing or non-disappearing uh, uh, it's going to be whatever it is based on however you put the target but to actually make this appear to be a non-disappearing target we're going to move this target up so that the upper A zone is still visible at rest because that's going to be key on this stage Let's see, I actually probably move it down a little bit. We're moving it uh, up and down along the blue axis. Uh, that'll be close, probably the upper. Pan back. We'll go down a little bit further. Again, you can zoom in, you have a finer adjustment in this case. Move it down a little bit. Probably some of the B zone, but the entire upper A zone will be visible. Uh, so how I did that. Didn't, <laughs> didn't tell you. So I clicked on the object. This is a group. All these targets and stands and arrow and everything is put together as a group, which means you can move it, you can rotate it, you can do everything, and all these pieces will stick together. Uh, how you edit that, <clears throat> you click right click edit group, and then I clicked on this target. Well, it turns out there's another group inside that group. And that happens occasionally. It's not that no big deal. Basically, the, anything you see highlighted in blue is part of that group. So you have the two targets and the arm and the weight are all part of this group. So then you cl right click and click edit group again. And then you can actually, so there's another group right there with the target, the stand, and the, uh, the weight. And this is its own separate <coughs> group right here. So this is the one I adjusted. No big deal. Actually, see where I actually raise that up? It's not a big deal in the, uh, in the grand scheme of things. But what we can do, we can take that back down. This is another group. We can edit that group. And so we want to move the target sticks. Uh, we can basically... Oh. Whenever you've got something highlighted, sometimes the... Uh, 
move and rotate acts weird. So we can bring that down. Anyway, that's just to make it look a little bit better. It's not really any big deal. And when you get done moving things around, you just right click, close group. And you edit a group, right or right click anywhere around outside of it, close group. So that's that. No big deal. Uh, it's something that you'll kind of run across occasionally when you need to tweak things like that. Another option is just to take this, copy it, paste it back over, and we'll rotate that around to parallel with the other one. <clears throat> and then you can go in uh, File, Save as Template. And so now you've got that target there whenever you want to use it uh, they're different you know so I've done that several times in the past with different targets I've made and uh, you know add a target and you just go ahead and save it as a template just so you've always got it or you can do you can just have a basic one and then edit it in the uh, the stage that you want either way no problem all right so moving on I want to have a vision barrier here, so I'm going to go grab a double barrel stack, copy paste, and in the middle, but I want some distance here because depending on where it is, I want to be able to see the, so I got some distance here, I want to be able to block some of the barrels or excuse me I want to block some of the plates from this right hand side of the stage I'll probably move it a little closer so this plate racks kinda high as far as what they look like in real life so I'm gonna move it down a little bit so this is kinda tricky you want to be on the blue axis moving up and down and this one may be bigger than normal I don't know most of these things are pretty much to scale but it may not be anyway that'll work there so I want to add a wall in front of that barrel I'm gonna add two walls actually but one of them is gonna be perpendicular to the back berm see how I added that there just to keep from having a bunch of barrel stacks alright so I'm gonna put a wall perpendicular to this one as well so paste, rotate that around to zero degrees, move it up here, close. I'm not really worried about, uh, we'll try and center it and see how it looks. You can see there's a gap, that's okay, you can't see anything through it. So we also need some sort of target over here. So we do want to paper out here. Make it a really good. Make it a medium range paper, I guess. It'll only be about eight yards or so. So when I started, I made this bay pretty small, as you can see. This is going to be a, a short course in one of the smaller bays of my local range. All right, so we grab a fault line. Put it down here, paste, rotate it parallel with the back berm, zero degrees. Going to move that up here. Going to go ahead and scale it pretty wide, probably double the length that it is right now. So scale, drag it out to enter, and that makes it long. Ooh, that's too long. That's way too long. So control Z und uh, is an undo function. We're going to undo that. Let's see. We're going to... The key here... And let me go ahead and get a little small fault line and show you what I'm trying to do. So we're going to stick this on the end here. So this is where that snap function comes into play. You can see I just snapped the, this corner here to this corner there, and those are now together. So I'm looking for in these angles, 
I don't want to be able to see that sixth plate. I really don't necessarily want to see that fifth plate. And also what I'm going to do, I'm going to move these poppers, these mini poppers, closer together. I'll put them underneath the two center plates. That's about even. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it helps to get the angles figured out in the stage. All right, so I don't like that, so I'm going to highlight and select that uh, fault line. I'm going to hold down Control and click this one as well, and that allows me to move them both together without actually making them a group. So that's a good thing. We're going to move that along the red axis. And with that there... see three plates you can kind of see the or excuse me you can see four plates you can kind of see the fifth it'd be a tight shot on the barrel that's okay moving in just a little bit more so then we're going to scale this out try and do about the same thing here Oop, I clicked the wrong Square and cube. You'll be able to see four plates, maybe five if it's a real hard lean, and you want to be able to see both poppers. All right, so I'm going to copy this over here. I'm going to move, snap these corners together. Then I'm going to copy this one down. So it's already snapped to this bottom corner here, so I'm just going to pop it in place against that one. See all these line up. So my thought is draw to this paper. You're going to be standing outside the box over here. Sorry for that sharp break there. My, uh, my computer decided to freeze up on me for a second. I'm using an old... Uh, cheap laptop to record this. All right, so we need to start position. I want to be, I like to put X's there just to make it very visible when you actually zoom out and print it out. So there's normally a little icon over here. I don't see it on this computer. So we'll go to tools, 3D text. I'll have a little window pop up. Uh, type in X, couple spaces and another X. I normally do them, um, I think I normally do them six inches height, and that's going to be one inch extruded depth, basically. Uh, so we'll place that. See them here. We'll rotate those around 90 degrees. And move them close to the fault line. Because I know a lot of times at my local club, we'll just put marks on the fault line, say toes on marks. Again, this is all going to be, or that's going to be in the uh, stage briefing. So the marks are there. Toes on marks. Make sure you can't see that max trap over here. So we're going to put a barrel stack here. So copy the other barrel stack, paste. We're going to paste another one right here. A lot of times these protect the walls. They provide a little bit of depth uh, to keep from having to... You see, if, if we're just going by the end of the wall and somebody steps into the box right here, they could see that max trap immediately, and we don't want that. So we want them to actually have to move a little bit to see it. Uh, not much, because it's most likely going to go pretty quick. Uh, so here's going to be the the key to this stage. It's gonna have kind of a trade-off. It's nothing crazy, nothing really all that interesting, but this popper right here is going to activate the max trap. So you think we'll step into the box. Most time, most people probably shoot paper first. 
they could potentially shoot that as they're backing out, but probably going to need to have to get over to the max trap unless they want to shoot it at its resting state. So they can shoot plates, shoot up to four plates there easily and shoot two poppers and move. Um, you know, they can shoot these in any order there. So that is eight rounds. Then over here, oh, we need to move that barrel so, stack so people can actually see the targets. Yeah, that'll work. Or they can play it completely safe and shoot two paper. Um, they shoot two paper, shoot, uh, call it two plates, and then come over here and shoot the rest. Now, if they come over here, they'll have to shoot, or they'll have to come further, because otherwise, well, let's see. That's what we need to do. We need to make it more interesting where they have to come further. And you know what? For a sample stage, it's no big deal. Uh, Y'all can figure that stuff out. So I like to draw a line in between the activator and the mover just to designate what it is. So we're going to hit L for the line command. Somewhere in the middle here, I'm going to draw a vertical line. I'm going to do about 8 inches tall. So I type in 8 and hit Enter. And I hit Escape. Then I draw a curved line. Uh, I normally do a three-point arc here. So we'll start at the weight. Draw it to the stake in the ground, whatever it is, and then click on the front of the popper. And a lot of times I'll delete that just because it gets in the way. So what that's doing is just showing a curved line, showing, say, an activator rope. You, know, you could draw a vertical line here for the actual stick to hold it up, but it's really not a big deal. Mainly, you're just you could draw a straight line there if you wanted to, just to show that that is activating the max trap. So anyway, uh, you can also do 3D text and actually place it on the face here, right out of stage description. I've done that with a lot of my stages in the past, just so I don't forget what I had planned. Uh, but this is just a very simple stage. Again, you start at toes touching marks, um, however, what kind of start condition you want your gun. You can shoot four plates, two mini poppers from here, one paper. And you can shoot four plates, two mini poppers, and two paper from here. Twelve rounds total, I think. Yes, twelve rounds total. Just something interesting. You can make it kind of risky. Um because you've got so many options here you can shoot after you shoot the activator depending on how slow or fast you uh, you set it uh, but anyway that's just a, a quick stage you can uh, I wanted to walk through everybody and show how I do it I've got some more videos coming uh, I'm gonna show you how to make a custom prop uh, I made this one earlier today I actually don't like it. I want to change a few things on it. But I'll show you how to do something like that. I'll also have a video on how to do a walkthrough, like an animated walkthrough. You actually make a video you can put on YouTube showing all the different positions that may be in a stage. Now, if you look back through my channel in the uh, USPSA stage design playlist, you'll see some. Uh, but anyway... That's all for today. Hopefully get some uh, new videos out very shortly. If you have any questions, concerns, comments, suggestions, please leave them in the description below. And look forward to hearing from you. Thanks.